Just like you, I sometimes look for inspiration from other YouTube creators. My goal is to make a new junk journal to fit into this TN cover. And I stumbled upon a tutorial for a junk mail envelope journal by Natasha from Treasure Books. So let's see if I can follow her instructions, but still manage to make it my own style. Welcome, it's Barbara from Vienna, Austria. So this insert is getting quite full. I do still have a few pages to complete, but I want to go ahead and make a new one so that it's ready when this one is full. And it just so happens that a junk mail envelope is perfect. I just need to trim it down a little bit in height. I do have one of these traveler's notebook inserts as a guide. So my envelope is actually a little bit wider, but I'm guessing once I have all the pages in and this back here will curve. So I think in the end it will be the same width. So I'm just going to trim down the length. Now we just have to open up the other side of the envelope. And open it up like this. Natasha then added some interest on the front of her envelope by adding some scraps of book pages and some painting and some mark making. I'm going to use my beautiful vintage stamps. You will recognize this box if you've seen my declutter series. I'm so happy to have these in my box and I am actually using these a lot more now that I have them out in the open. I'm going to use black archival ink and I'm just going to do some random stamping here. Next, Natasha uses a napkin to put over her other layers. Instead of a napkin, I'm going to use some beautiful sewing pattern. I received this from Julie. Thank you again so much, Julie. This came from Australia. And I realized that this is so different than the ones that I can find here. The ones here are a lot more stiff. I mean, they're very hard to find in general, I think, but this is such a different quality and it's so soft and silky. I just love it. I just recently made this junk journal using vintage sewing paper, but this is a lot more crisp than this one. So I'm excited to try this one out on a journal as well. I will link the videos for this journal below in case you're interested in seeing how I made this one. So I cut out a rectangle, which is a little bit bigger than my envelope. And I'm going to use some matte medium to glue it on. And I want to make sure I don't get the glue on the window, but if I do, I can always wipe it off. So I'm going to spread this out. So if you do stamping like I do, make sure that you have used some archival ink, some permanent ink, otherwise it would smear now at this stage. And I'm going to try to work as fast as I can so that this doesn't dry up in the meantime. Oh, I got some on the window there. I'll just take a baby wipe and wipe that off. And now my aim is to add this with wrinkles. So. I explicitly want this to have a texture and to be wrinkly, which I feel is something that happens anyway if you don't watch out. <laughs> so it's quite easy to do. <laughs> so I'm just kind of scrunching it up a bit. 
but I do want to make sure that it's all stuck down to the envelope. I don't want any bubbles. Like this here has no glue. I think I can do this. Yeah, and it'll go through because it is so thin. So that's awesome. So wherever I see that I have air bubbles, I'm going to add some more matte medium. Okay, and now I see that I don't have as much texture yet as I want to have. So I'm just going to add another layer of this patterned sewing paper. So I'm not even going to let this dry. I'm just going to add some more matte medium straight over that. And do the same thing. Just try to add maybe a little more wrinkles now. I want to make sure it's stuck down well all around the window. And then I'll add some more on top to make sure that everything is really glued well. No bubbles, no air. Making sure to get all of the edges covered completely. Oh, it's tearing here, but that does not matter. I'm not gonna worry about it. What I can do here with the tear is I can either just leave it as it is, or I can just patch it up with another piece of that paper. So I'll another, add another piece, make sure it's nice and wrinkly, and add some more matte medium on top. It will just add to the nice textured effect that we have. Oh, there's another tear here. And for the window, what Natasha does is she takes tweezers and then she just tears that open. Now we have two layers, so we have to do it for both layers. So Natasha then tears all the way around the window, but I think in my case, I want to have it kind of showing that this is a torn window. So I'm not going to tear it perfectly and I'm just going to bend them back like this and then go over it again with some matte medium. And since there's some of the envelopes showing, I'm going to add some more of my patterned paper. I'm doubling it up. And again, adding some wrinkles for texture. And going over it with more matte medium. And then I'm going to take a damp baby wipe and wipe off any excess glue from the window. So now we let this dry. One very important thing I'd like to add at this point is do not, I repeat, do not use your heat gun to dry this because you, <laughs> the window of your envelope will melt. Yes, I've done that several times. So you don't want to do that. Please make your own mistakes. Don't copy mine. <laughs> so let this air dry, please. It's a couple of hours later and this has now dried, so I can go ahead and trim off any excess. Instead of cutting the edges off, you could have, of course, just glued these over the edge like this, but that would have meant more drying time. <laughs> so for the sake of the video, I'm cutting these off. Next, Natasha cuts a slit in the window so that becomes a pocket. I'll have to do mine a little bit differently because of the way I made the edge. So I'm going to make the cut on top of the actual window up here, but making sure that I'm still on the part where the plastic is covered. So I'm going to take my handy chocolate box <laughs> so I don't cut into my table and I will try to cut a slit actually I'm going to take a ruler because I know I can't cut straight a 
Okay, so I have this slit here and I made it a little bit wider than the windows so that it's a little bit easier to put something inside. So next we're going to cover the inside with some cardstock. And as you can see here, I cut a little bit too far in. So I'm just going to cover that with a piece of regular tape. We won't see that later. I just want to make sure that this won't tear further. Okay. I'm going to use this beautiful piece of cardstock, which I was gifted. It is blank on the back side, so that means when I line my envelope with this, it's obviously going to be blank here. So I need to think about how to make that look pretty as well. So I'm just going to add glue here. Obviously not here where the window is. So I'll just make a border until where I will add my glue. And this will determine the width of my pocket. And I'm going to use my three in one glue for this. You can use any glue that you like working with. PVA glue or tacky glue. I like this three in one glue or actually it's the Colal glue in the three in one bottle. So the Colal glue is what we can find more easily and is cheaper than the three in one glue, but it's exactly the same ingredients. So it's C O L L A L L and it's the all purpose glue. And I am not paying attention and putting the glue in the wrong spot. Yeah, always happens when I'm talking <laughs> and working. Oh, I can't glue it on yet. Editing Barbara here. So I noticed while editing that I'm missing a whole chunk of this video. My apologies. So what happened was that I realized obviously that I don't want the white background behind that pocket. So I just cut off a piece of that same cardstock and glued it first where the window is. And then on top of that, I glued the front side of the cover. So then we can go ahead and fold our little cover. Then I'm going to ink up the edges front and back with walnut stain. I also want to add some distress oxide around this frame and my little slit here. And then I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and sew around the whole cover once or maybe twice. <laughs> so I'm back from the sewing machine and I stitched around it twice. First with a stitch alternating between the zigzag and the straight stitch. And then I went around it again just with a straight stitch but making sure that I kind of have it wonky. I just like that look. And on the inside we have this. And I'm sorry if you can hear weird noises. We're just having a thunderstorm here right now. <laughs> so now the inside looks a bit plain. So I want to add some more grunginess to this. I'm going to use the technique that I learned from Louise, which is to use your Distress Oxide Reinker. They are just more intensive than if you use the ink pad and I'm using gloves because these things really stain your hands. <laughs> and I'm going to mix or oh, maybe I should say what I'm using. I'm using vintage photo which will give me this beautiful rust color and I'm pairing it with tea dye. These are actually the only reinkers that I own. Had these for a really long time and I'm so happy that I can use them in this way. So we'll just add some water and then I'm just going to let that drip. And then I'll add some water here as well. And we'll just make this whole thing more grungy.
We can also just dip it into some of the drips that we have going on here. Yeah, look at this. I think it's going to look a lot different when it's dry. And since I have all this yumminess here, I'm just going to dip the front in it as well. Look at the mess. <laughs> So this is what we have so far. It's very, very grungy. This is the inside, super grungy. <laughs> and now, of course, what happened is this sticks out like a sore thumb. And by the way, again, do not dry with your heat gun. I almost did that, <laughs> but thankfully I remembered. So what I should have done, of course, is before I glued that extra piece onto the inside, I should have grunged up as well to fit the outside, but I didn't. So I just grunged up another piece that I had left over and I'm going to do my best to insert that here. Let's just see if it fits actually. Yeah, that will work. So again, please don't copy my mistakes, make your own. Think of new ones. <laughs> Challenge yourself to think of new mistakes you can make. <laughs> And the thunderstorm has stopped, by the way, thankfully. Let's hope I can just slide that in. Yes. Yay. Okay, now it actually all fits together. And can you guess what I'm going to do next? <laughs> if you know me, then you know. Since I wanted to have some wrinkles, I obviously want to highlight those wrinkles and my favorite way of doing that currently is by using some gold. So again, I'm going to use my Inca Gold. This is Fast Drying Metal Gloss Paint by Viva. This one is called Old Gold. And I prefer using this to gilding wax because it dries a lot faster. And if I don't have a window like this, I can actually use my heat gun to dry it off. But actually it dries so quickly that it just takes a few minutes. Whereas the gilding wax, I feel, first of all, <laughs> I can't use the heat gun because it will just melt the wax. And secondly, it takes longer to dry. So when you're making videos, time is of the essence. <laughs> So it's easier to use this. So I am gently, maybe I should start in the back. I'm gently going to rub this, especially over where my creases are to highlight those. Okay, so I'm going to go around the whole journal and keep doing this. But you can of course do the same thing with acrylic paint or even watercolor. If I would be using watercolor, I would do it with a paintbrush, but have the watercolor thick. And if it's acrylic paint, I would just dip my finger in it and go for it. You don't necessarily need this special paint. And obviously it doesn't have to be gold either. It could be any color that you like. I like all the creases and wrinkles. So then we need to do some decoration, don't we? I have a little basket here with some die cuts, mostly die cuts. And I'd like to use something from here on the cover. I don't want to make anything new. I want to use what I have. Most of these are made out of wallpaper. I don't really want this color, but I could turn it around and use the white side. I like that. Maybe there's something else. That's a bit much, maybe too many solid elements, I think. I think I want something a little bit more delicate. Oh, this would be cute. What if we add this and this? Maybe we cut this a little bit short. Now that's adorable. I really like that. So let's keep that as an option also have these. These are kind of off-white 
If I match these with pure white, actually that would also be okay. It doesn't matter. Again, I would cut this short. Oh, I like that. Maybe even more. That's like BAM! <laughs> Do I want BAM? Let's see. If I use this instead. Ooh, that eye even fits better to the grungy style, wouldn't you say? I like it. But we could do some more, whoops, some more floral things on the back side. Let's make this shorter. Oh, this is so cute on its own, actually. Aww. <laughs> So what do you say? Is it too white? I just decided this stark white is too much of a contrast. So I'm going to try to tone it down a bit with some buff titanium acrylic paint. These two, by the way, are Tim Holtz. I will link these for you below. This one I cannot link. This one was from Action. And this one I currently don't remember. If I find the link, you will find it in the description box below. Now, I think these still look a bit boring. So I want to add some stamping to these as well. And I'm going to use the same vintage stamps that I used on the cover. Again, making sure I use permanent ink because I'm going to use my matte medium to go over these. Time to glue them on. So the color of these is now getting a little bit darker because by adding the matte medium, I'm of course activating the Distress Oxide again. So those two are mixing, which is totally fine. I'm happy to have these just a little bit darker. If I wouldn't want that to happen, I would have needed to add a fixative on it first. It's the next day and I'm looking at this with fresh eyes. I do like where this is going, but I feel like I do want to add a little bit of color here as well. Before I do that, I think I will add a little bit of gold on these die cuts. Not too much. That's what I always say at the beginning and then I can't stop. <laughs> The intention is always to just keep it light. Can't see this at all actually. Because I don't want the die cuts to blend into the background, so I don't want to add too much gold. And actually, that's very hard to see. Huh. Okay, maybe I'll just leave it at that so you can only see it if you really come in closely. Ah, here I can see it a little better. Again, I don't want to put too much because I don't want it blending into the background. Can you even see that? Yeah, a little bit. And then again, looking at things I already have, I think I want to use these leaves on the front cover as well if I can make them work. These don't really provide a lot of color, but I have this beautiful one i will link the dies to these these are the tim holtz are they just called leaves they might just be called leaves anyway i will link them for you below in case you want to check them out i love these so much and then maybe a turquoise one so either this one or maybe a smaller one would be better so what do we think of something like this this just adds a little bit more interest and color yes i like it and i'm just going to add my fake three in one aka coal glue <laughs> it's so good to look at your projects after you've had a break from them i mean i'm guessing most of you know this but i'm i'm always surprised at the way these these projects just 
change in your perspective. Because when you're so in it, you just can't see it. But then you wake up the next day and you have totally fresh eyes. It's like you're seeing it for the first time and you have a more objective view on what you still need to do. That's my experience anyway. There we go. Then we obviously still need a tag or something to put in our window. Otherwise, what's the point of the window? <laughs> and I'm thinking of one of two options. The first one is I have received these, I think quite a while ago. Love the nature theme here, love the colors. And I am contemplating adding this one here. It has a great size. I would obviously back it on something. So that's an option. Okay, it's crooked, but yeah, you get the idea. So that would be really cute. The other option I see is using my smallest tree stamp. Also has the perfect size. And if I do this one, then I'm thinking that I should stamp that on part of that sewing paper to stay with the theme. And then maybe I could stamp that in like a turquoise green, similar to these colors. So that would add another pop of color. And I could maybe even stamp some of the numbers that I stamped on the cover on the background. I'm, I'm very curious to see what that would look like. So I'll start by stamping some of these for the background. I've inked up my tree stamp with peacock feathers. So hopefully this will give me a nice impression here. I wish I had one of these plotter mats that Louisa, Louisa Heinzel was suggesting in a video a few weeks ago. If you haven't seen that, please check it out. I will link it for you below. If you ever have had problems with your stamps, like with the normal cling stamps or the silicone stamps, uh, if you've had a problem that they don't stick to your acrylic block or you have small ones like this, I think even I think that would even work with my handmade stamps. Please check Louise's videos. It is life changing. I need to get a mat like that. Yeah, so check that out. Okay, this worked quite well. Oh, I like it. Do I say that too often? <laughs> Let's see what that would look like with a book page underneath. Oh, yeah. Yes. So let's do that. I'm going to take my matte medium again. And yeah, I can't put it on top because then my stamp will smear the tree stamp. So I just have to gently dab it. I already kind of smeared the tree, but I think it's still okay. It's all right. I dried it with my heat gun and I feel like it's too flimsy to go in here because it will be hard to pull it out. I don't know whether I will be pulling it out a lot, but I want to have the option. So I'm going to glue this onto some cardstock. Then I want to figure out the width of this. So I will trim that first. By the way, if you haven't seen how I make these tree stamps, I have a video showing you exactly how I do that. So you can find that linked below as well. Okay, let's check the width. Yep, perfect. Now I want to figure out actually the height was fine as well. So I will just trim this off. But I want some kind of a tag topper. Oh, it's coming loose. I need to fix this. I want to figure out some kind of a tag topper so that I can pull it out more easily. I'm just going to use my finger to patch this up with some more matte medium. 
I took this to the sewing machine and sewed around it in the same way I sewed around the cover. I really don't like this smeared part here, so I'm going to try to remove some of this smeared oxide. I have a wet Q-tip. Hopefully that will work. I guess it depends on whether I got some of the matte medium on top or not. Obviously I did. It wouldn't have smeared otherwise. Yeah, so this is not coming off. Okay. I will just have to accept it for what it is. Or what I could also do is maybe take a fine liner and outline the tree. No, 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 not doing that. Okay, next step, let's ink it up. Let's do what Gail does, ink and think. What kind of a topper we can add. Let's ink the back up as well, always. Okay, so I need something on the top here to be able to pull it out. One thing I would love to somehow add is a piece of this ball chain. But in order to attach that, I need to add something on top to which I could add that to with an eyelet probably. I don't have this same book page again. That was a scrap. So I'm going to take this scrap of another book page, add some more crinkly tissue paper or what is it called? Sewing pattern over that. Once that has dried, I'm going to cut a rectangle. Then I'll fold it in half. And I'm going to take my envelope punch board and make a tab. So there's one notch. And now I just want to see how wide do I want to have this. Yeah, so I want this at the end. And now I just cut this off. And I'll cut this down a little bit as well. And there's my tab. And I can add that up here. It's not the prettiest tab. <laughs> And then I should probably stitch on top of that again. And actually what I should do first is ink that up. Okay, so I managed a wonky stitch. So that now looks like it was always meant to be there. So now I just have to make a hole in the middle and add an eyelet. Then we need to cut a piece of this chain. How long do I want this? We'll add a little closure like that. And then let's stick it in and see what that looks like. Does this need something on it? We add a charm here. I actually don't like that this is in the middle because it covers the tree. Oh no, I should have thought about that. I should have put an eyelet on the side. That would have been much smarter. <laughs> it's okay. I'm just going to have the chain dangling to the top like that. Then it's fine. And I'm not going to add a charm or anything. I think the chain on its own is fine. Okay, I'm happy with my cover. So now we need to fill it. I have already chosen my papers and put together one signature using 13 pages. I'll do a flip through at the end. There's nothing special really in here. So as we can see, they fit in perfectly. It has a lot of room to grow, which it will need because we know that these get a lot bulkier. So I'm happy with having it this thin at the moment. So I'm going to use a five hole pamphlet stitch to just stitch these in. I have secured all my papers right onto the cover. Since this is so thin, I feel like I can just do it all in one. I've never done that, but why not? Just making sure that everything is nice and lined up here to the middle of my spine. Then I'm going to eyeball where the middle is. 
and then go out approximately maybe like one and a half inches on either side of that middle hole and then again go another one and a half inches approximately on either side of those holes why make it more complicated than it has to be I'm taking a black embroidery thread. I took three times the height of my journal. That will be plenty. I'm going to start on the middle hole, go from the inside out since I want my knot at the end to be on the inside middle. Then I'll go back in through the next hole on top. You could go either way, top or bottom. I just kind of always go to the top first. Then I'll go out again through the next hole, back in through that same hole, trying my best not to pierce the thread that's already in there. Now on the way down, I'm going to skip the middle hole. So I'll skip this and go out again through that next hole. Go in through the most bottom hole back in through the fourth hole so the second from the bottom and lastly back in through the middle again ideally you come out again not piercing the other thread and on the other side of that one that you already have on there that was a horrible explanation <laughs> i'll show you what i mean i mean that you want one of these on either side of this middle thread and then you make sure you pull them tight make sure it's all tight here and then you just tie a double or triple knot i feel like this is a good one to do if you are a beginner and you're unsure of the binding because this way you can just do it all in one rather than having to first punch the holes in the spine and then you punch the holes in the signatures you just do it all in one easy peasy I'm gonna cut these short take these off so I'll give you a quick flip through as I said nothing exciting a bunch of different book pages in different languages different colors music paper old ledger paper this was, I don't know, some kind of notebook with some beautiful old handwriting, some sewing paper, vintage floral book, and that's it. If I would not be putting this in here, I would want to have a closure. I don't need it since I have it in here anyway. But what I might do when this is full is to make a closure. And the way I would do that is to add a hole here, then put a nice button here, sew that on. Actually, I don't even need the hole. Forget the hole. I would just, <laughs> I would just sew the button on here. And then I would take a ribbon, tie it around the button, and then just wrap it around and wrap it around the button. I hope you know what I mean. Very simple closure and I think that would look really cute. But for me, this is good. This is exactly what I needed to fit in here and I'm ready to go once this one is completely filled up. Yay! Love you guys! Mwah! Mwah! <laughs>